man's man is someone I've always wanted to be. Someone who is handy with his hands and a promise he will always keep. But if it wasn't for the hard work combined with the humility, I really don't know where my father would be. And it's funny to me how this came true because being present in the physical is something my father could not always do. When I was six years old, my father left me alone with two sisters and a mother who was all too eager to leave. At such a young age, I found myself in countless situations being held captive by the evil thoughts that called themselves guard within my mind, tricking me into believing that a man was everything but these qualities that my father possessed, telling me that a man had to have a pocket full of green, telling me that a man had to wear a mask that was always mean, and telling me that if you couldn't beat them, then you must join the other team, and this is what it was like when I was all alone without having a shoulder on the lean. But this is no sad, pitiful story. In fact, let me flip this around. Two short years later, my father came back home to put on his one slot's crown. Claude Elwin Jr. is a name that holds true. Raised in Jonesboro, Arkansas, show me a map and I'm certain you'd have a hard time finding it too. Born into a family on October 14, 1976, one child of eight as if his physical isolation wasn't already enough. But he worked hard to overcome his situation, and that's what makes him so tough. See, my father is a man's man, and someone I wish to someday become. I recall stories of him growing up, forced at an early age to work in the cotton fields to help make money for his family. This being true because where my father comes from, you either made a big time playing basketball or you didn't make it at all. And his brothers being taller than him had a better chance of playing ball, so he was forced to pick up the slack and for his family he did it all. He would wake up before the sun to make it to work, then leave work to head to school, and after school it was back to the cotton fields because his day finished when the sun went down. When I examine my situation and think that I have it rough, I just think back to his story and it makes me understand that I'm very much in love. And to think that he did it all for 20 bucks. See, my father is a man's man. True. The physical labor was hard, but it created within him a mentality that was harder, a love that was deeper, a sense of commitment that couldn't be broken when times got rough. I remember a time when I was young and I asked my dad what it meant to be a man. And he told me this, no, the difference between a boy and a man is hard work and humility. A man will work hard for what he has and admit when he is wrong. My father, like many others, has had a tough life growing up, but the reason that I respect my dad so much is because he has been nothing but an open picture book with me. Never lying and always explaining the full story. Never jumping to conclusions or making assumptions. Never leading having not yet followed, but better yet, never trusting without first forgiving. It is these qualities that I hope to one day possess, to be able to understand a fellow loving human being, not for what they can do for me, but for what I can do for them. Growing up, I never saw myself as this, but I was definitely a daddy's boy, following my father wherever he went. And for most of my life, this was to church. I would watch him get up on stage and sing his heart out. I never seen someone exude so much confidence and passion so effortlessly. And with every fading breath, he would touch the hearts of so many people around him. To then go back home, wake up the next morning, press play on his regularly scheduled routines. The next Sunday rolls around and you can bet. My dad was back up on stage where he was very much blessed. But he didn't do it for the fame. I don't believe that. He didn't do it for the money because I had never seen that. This was simply a quality that my father possessed, humility. And when it was easy for him to become cocky, this is when he showed it best. If you haven't yet taken notice, hard work and humility are my father's central theme. He would always tell me, no, you can drop me off anywhere in this country and I promise you that I will be okay. Of course, because of my young adolescent age, I responded with a sarcastic comment of, why is that? And he told me this confidently. I know how to work. It's no coincidence that those five words hold so much influence on my life. I know how to work. It's no coincidence that when times get rough and I feel like throwing in the towel, I remind myself that I know how to work. 
It's no coincidence that when my head's down and I don't see a way out, I remember I know how to work. My family was poor. When I turned 16, the responsibility of contributing came true. Juggling school, soccer, and a full-time job was just something I didn't think I could do. But it was in those late nights when I'd see my father come home from work tired and abused that I finally told myself, if my dad can do it, then for me this must be true. See, my father knows how to work, and thanks to him, now I do too. I'm so thankful to have my father on my team, not only because he's a man's man, but because he's a man of my dreams. Woo!